Hey there everyone, how are you doing? Joe Marion here from MobileCupOfJoe.com. In this episode of Mobile Cup of Joe, I'm going to be giving you my full review of the Barnes & Noble Nook HD tablet. The Nook HD is another 7-inch Android tablet trying to find its way in the crowded market of 7-inch tablets, which continues to gain popularity. Now, what does the Nook HD have going for it though? It really separates it from all the other 7-inch tablets currently in the market. Well, the Nook HD is claiming to have the world's highest pixel resolution for a tablet in the 7-inch form factor with a resolution of 1440 by 900 with 243 pixels per inch. Now, the Nook HD certainly has a beautiful screen, but does it have the guts and the additional features to take on other 7-inch tablets such as the iPad Mini, the Google Nexus 7, and the Amazon Kindle Fire? Find out right now in our full review, but guys, before we go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring over, and sit on down. Take a swig for a mobile cup of Joe. Alright, uh, before we get too far in this review, I'd like to give a big thank you and shout out to our friends over at Barnes & Noble for hooking us up with the Barnes & Noble Nook HD tablet. It's because of companies like Barnes & Noble that really make Mobile Cup of Joe possible by sending us their products and allowing us to unbox and review them for you guys, our fans. So big thanks to Barnes & Noble for the Nook HD, and let's get started with this video review. So as with all of our video reviews, we're going to talk about the design and build quality aspects of the Nook HD first. The Nook HD is 7.70 by 5.0 by 0 0.43 inches and it weighs in at 11.11 .11 ounces. On the front of this tablet, you have your 7-inch screen with a pixel resolution of 1440 by 900 with 243 pixels per inch. On the bottom of the screen, you have uh, your physical home button right here in the shape of the Nook N logo. On the right side of the tablet, we have our volume rocker, and on the left side, we have our power slash lock button. On the bottom of the tablet, we have our charging port and a uh, microphone pinhole, and the charging por port is proprietary. It is not micro USB. And uh, to the left of the charging port, we have a micro SD card slot, which is really great for expanding your memory on the 7-inch tablet. I really don't see that a whole lot nowadays. Uh, on the front, on the top, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a microphone pinhole. And on the back of the tablet, uh, right below, on the very bottom, you have your speaker grill right here, which has some really nice sounding audio. In the back has this a nice soft touch grip to it, which makes it feel really great. Now, you also notice on the front of the tablet that this bezel is pretty big. Now, you might be worried about that, but it actually makes for a really great experience. Uh, it allows you to hold the device very comfortably in one hand and operate the screen with your other hand. And if you do drop this thing face first, all the bezel is raised enough so the bezel is going to take the impact and the screen should be perfectly fine. So all in all, I was really impressed with the design and build quality of the Nook HD. Really, really impressed actually. So now going on to some hardware of the Nook HD. Uh, the biggest selling point of the Nook HD is its screen. Uh, it has a 7-inch screen, as we mentioned before, a pixel resolution of 1440 by 900 with 243 pixels per inch. This is the highest pixel resolution we've seen today on a 7-inch tablet. This is what Barnes & Noble is claiming. This is the biggest selling point for the Nook HD, and it's actually pretty incredible. We're going to go ahead and adjust the brightness uh, so we can get... Uh, full experience here and you know just by looking at the icons on the screen uh, this thing is really beautiful now you might have to uh, see it in person for yourself since this video is only playing in 720p HD but it is a very beautiful screen we're going to head, go ahead and load up a movie uh, to kind of demonstrate how a streaming video of the Nook HD is going to look let's go ahead and watch Midnight in Pettis uh, we'll just uh, resume Blaine and you can see that uh, it looks incredible, at least in person. Again, not sure if it's going to pick up all the pixels from the camera, uh, but this thing really does look incredible. Uh, all your uh, very serious people in Paris reading their books looks really incredible. Uh, gotta have your people in Paris reading their books uh, look really gorgeous. Uh, but all joking aside, though, the screen really is tremendous. This is one of the best screens I've ever seen on a tablet. Uh, obviously, the best screen resolution I've ever seen on a 7-inch tablet. Really incredible. Barnes & Noble did a heck of a job with the screen on here. Uh, let's go ahead and load up a magazine so you can see how a magazine looks with this high pixel resolution. And you can see uh, just the details and everything, the magazines, the home screen, the, uh, the video, everything is just so detailed, so nice to look at. It's really easy on the eyes, 
text is extremely crisp. Colors are nicely saturated and they're very accurate. They don't feel too saturated or undersaturated at times. Everything just looks really great. Again, one of the best screen resolutions I've ever seen on a tablet. So big, big uh, props to Barnes & Noble for the screen resolution. Now, in terms of processing speeds, you've got a 1.3 gigahertz dual core Texas Instruments OMAMP 447 CPU. So let's go ahead, and uh, you can see that when you're swiping through the home screens, kind of laggy. Uh, while this is more so due to, or at least I believe, uh, to Barnes and Noble's custom user interface they've layered over Android, I still have reason to believe that the CPU is faulty for this too. As you saw right there, I was swiping through those app screen, I was still loading up the app icons, not really great at all. Processor is a bit slow. You can see the transition from home landscape to portrait as a very slow transition as well. You can see the delay there is when making the transition, so really not that impressed with it. Now in terms of gaming though, I actually had a pretty decent uh, gaming performance. Let's go ahead and load up Fruit Ninja so you can see, because you got to test out Fruit Ninja. And you can see we're going to start a new game right there. Let's go ahead and start in arcade mode. And I've had this issue too. Sometimes it freezes on the games as you're loading them up. Not sure why, bit of an issue I had. Uh, but once you do get in the game though, it runs very, very good. I have no lag whatsoever. Uh, Barnes & Noble, I must say, they uh, did a decent job with the gaming performance. Again, I've had better, but this certainly is pretty good considering this is a tablet selling for 200 bucks. So gaming performance was pretty good, actually. So let's go ahead and uh, load up Temple Run Br Brave uh, to show you how another game is going to run on the Nook HD real quick. All right, so we had to actually uh, cut that because it took so long to load the game. But we finally got into it now. And let's go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, uh, it runs pretty smooth. Again, uh, you're going to find better experiences on some higher-end tablets. But selling for $199 actually it offers some pretty good gaming experiences. Uh, games like Fruit Ninja or Temple Run, uh, lighter games like that seem to run really, really great. On the Nook HD. Let's go ahead and run it again. Uh, graphics and everything look especially great uh, thanks to that glorious 1440 by 900 pixel resolution. So game performance I was actually uh, pretty uh, decent with. Actually a bit impressed actually uh, for the price. Now let's go ahead and load up the web browser. Uh, Barnes & Noble uses their own web browser on here and since they curate the content on their application store and kind of lock the Nook HD into their ecosystem, uh, you cannot change the default browser that you will find on the Nook HD. Uh, in my testing, I was kind of disappointed with the browsing as well. It was a bit mediocre. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our uh, desktop mode, our web mode. And uh, this is another issue I've had with their browser. Uh, you can sometimes hit on a link and it won't actually go to that. You sometimes have to hold it down and then hit open. I've had this issue on a couple few websites. Uh, not sure why, it's very annoying though. So you can see that pinching to zooming, kind of laggy. Oh, while it runs fairly good, uh, you again, you're going to find much better experiences. And you just saw there that when we zoomed out, it had to load up the rest of the screen. So the web browser is a bit slow. Let's go ahead and look at an article on here. Again, the pinching to zoom in is not really that great at all. And when you zoom out, zoom in pretty far, and then you go to zoom out, it uh, has to load the web page again. Uh, and multiple tabs open at once on the browser seem to slow it down too. It didn't uh, really was able to keep up that well. Uh, that dual core 1.3 gigahertz processor, while it performed pretty well in the gaming performance, seemed to struggle a bit with the web browser and swiping through your home screens as well. Again, while I think this is more due to Barnes & Noble's custom op UI and their web browser that they built, again, you still have to consider the processors when you talk about this. Now, the Nook HD is also lacking GPS, NFC, and cameras. These are all main features we have come to expect. You see, there's no cameras anywhere on here. Oh, while rear-facing cameras, we don't really see that often. Front-facing cameras are essential. GPS is essential. NFC at this day and age is essential to your tablet. Nowhere found on the Nook HD, and is a bit of a disappointment. I know they're selling it for $199, but they still could have included those features in here while keeping the price low. Now, one thing, though, that I do really appreciate on the Nook HD is its option to expand your memory via micro SD card slot, and you, actually ex it, you can actually expand it up to 64 gigabytes, uh, which is fantastic if you like storing all of your content uh, locally on your device. 
Now, while the battery of the Nook HD is unknown, uh, in our testing, we got about nine to nine and a half hours of use out of it, which is pretty great. Uh, while you're going to get a little bit better battery on some higher end devices, for 200 bucks, this is pretty good battery life. And now we're going to talk about uh, the software of the Nook HD. So the Nook HD is running a b Android 4.0.3 ice cream sandwich, but it is layered with Barnes & Noble's own custom user interface. At the bottom here, you have quick access to your library, apps, web, email, and shop, which is really nice to have quick access to those things. Now you can still slide through and customize your five home screens like you would on a, another Android tablet. Uh, you can still move your icons around to wherever you please. Uh, really nice, you still have uh, that customization. And at the top of your front home screen, you have a little mini carousel, uh, kind of like the one that was found on the Kindle Fire in the Kindle Fire HD that shows you your uh, latest, latest used content on your tablet. So right here, uh, we have access to our quick settings. Oh, you've got your brightness right there, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, lock rotation, and all settings, which is really nice. And in the middle, you have your notifications right there. And if you want to get rid of one, you can swipe it to get rid of it. <clears throat> now, your Nook today is a feature that is exclusive to the Nook HD and the Nook HD+. Plus. And I uh, wasn't really that impressed with it. Essentially, what it's supposed to do is show you content that's relative to your interests and the weather in your location. Kind of give you a look at what... So the stuff going on in your day is about the weather and the books but the weather was always inaccurate with my location the books based on my interests I never really got into on paper it looks like a good idea but in reality it doesn't work all that well now if you hold down on your home screen you have access to your library your apps all uh, your wallpapers uh, your bookmarks right here and after that, you have access to your widgets. So again, you can really customize this, although it is simplified uh, more than vanilla Android is, uh, you still have access to customize it a lot. Now, if you want to access your recently used applications, all you have to do is tap on this button in the bottom right-hand corner uh, right here, and you'll see all your open and recently used apps and content. If you want to get rid of one of those, just simply slide up on it, and it's gone. No real pretty animation, but it still works for the most part. Now, again, you can see that swiping through home screens, while it's relatively smooth, still a bit laggy. Uh, while I touched on this, while I thought it was the processors, uh, I really think this is more so due to Martin and Noble's custom uh, user interface I layered over it. You can see that when we're loading up our library, it's very slow. It takes a, b a bit of time for it to load up the content that's on the device, and I was pretty disappointed, actually, with their uh, UI feels a bit oversimplified, well, kind of mixed actually. It seems like they try to simplify it, try to give you uh, time and the ability to customize it, you kind of have a mixed bag of results. Now, the worst part of the Nook HD for me is their application store, and oh my god, this is probably the worst application store I have ever used. To show you an example, let's go ahead and load up the app search, and let's go ahead and search for YouTube, and it's searching it. Let's go ahead and hit refine to make sure we're only seeing applications. And look at that. We have LDS YouTube videos. 99 cents. We don't have a freaking YouTube application. Let's go ahead and search for another one. Let's search for a calculator app. You know, if you need a calculator, you can see we've got a selection, but they all cost 99 cents. There is no free calculator application for the Nook HD. That's ridiculous. Something as simple as a calculator, that should be free. You shouldn't have to pay money for it, even though it's only 99 cents. Even look for iHeartRadio, it's not on there at all either. One of the biggest music streaming sites is not on here. Now, what you see that a four picks, one word, very popular game is on here, costs 99 cents, whereas on other app stores, such as Google Play or Apple's App Store, it's a free freaking download. Really irritates me to not be able to have the content that you want is extremely aggravating. You'll also see here that there's no place on here to purchase music. While you have apps, magazines, movies, and TV, kids, apps, newspapers, and catalogs, and books, there's no place to purchase music. If you want your market content store or your app store to survive in today's market, you need a service to natively sell music for the device. If you don't, it's pretty much going to crash and burn. You need a place to purchase music. To not have it on here is just ridiculous. This is probably this an application store in Barnes & Noble's uh, Nook HD, one of the worst stores for apps I've ever seen. So, uh, I'm going to be giving the Nook HD a 6 out of 10. Uh, while I really like the design and the screen was absolutely beautiful, and for the price, 
of $199. Uh, you're getting good game performance, that design, the screen, and the expandable memory. You're not getting NFC. You're not getting GPS. You're not getting any cameras. You're getting a pretty slow experience when browsing the web. You are getting a really not so great user interface. One of the worst application stores I've ever used and no native place to purchase music. Really, it's hard for me to recommend this tablet. If you're looking for an e-reader, but you want an ultra-powerful e-reader, you want to be able to do more than read books, this is probably for you since they do have a good selection of books and magazines, but if you want a full-fledged Android tablet, kind of feels a little incomplete. So that is my full review of the Barnes & Noble Nook HD tablet. Please feel free to comment below and let me know what you think of my review. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Mobile Cup of Joe. If you liked the video, please go ahead and hit the like button if you liked it. It takes one second to do so, and it really does help support the show. And if you want to show your support towards the show even more, I would really appreciate it if you'd go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more Mobile Cup of Joe videos. And you guys all know, though, that, know that Mobile Cup of Joe is on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to check out our website at mobilecupofjoe.com for your latest tech news outside of our videos. I'm Joe Martin from mobilecupofjoe.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.